So welcome to another episode of All Talk and today I'm out with the man, the myth, the legend that is Kev Child. He is the premier painter and decorator in the North East. If you've got stiff wood in the morning and you need that wood painting and polishing, he's the man for the job. And we are in his awesome retro Fiesta RS Turbo. <laughs> spec sheet on Kevin's RS Turbo reads a little bit like war and peace. Let me run you through the engine specification. We've got 0.5 oversized mile pistons, new main and big end bearings, an AP4 paddle clutch, 1mm oversized stainless steel valves, new seals and gaskets, Group A head gasket, Stage 2 T3 Turbo from an Escort RS Turbo, Cosworth Group A air filter, an AirTech Stage 2 front mount intercooler, uprated intercooler Stage 2 chip, uprated fuel pump, mongoose exhaust, recon gearbox, polybush gearbox mounts. We've got a fully primed and powder coated engine parts pretty much throughout polished inlet fuel rail and charge pipe, etched RS Turbo Vintags on the front panel. We've got blue Samco hoses, we've got the battery relocated into the boot, and we've got 196 brake horsepower at the wheels. So if you were a spotty teenager back in the mid 1990s, and you were a bit of a Ford fan, and you wanted something quick and tasty that was a little bit of a panty dropper, dare I even say that, then you wanted something like the Ford Fiesta RS Turbo or the Ford Escort RS Turbo. This is a 1.6 litre CVH engine. Actually, I think 1,597 cc's, if I'm being accurate, with 133 PS. And, as Kev will tell you now, it needs some fuel. And that's not unusual for one of these because you tend to drive them with your right foot planted firmly to the floor. Not a lot of power really. Still goes, doesn't it? Still goes, and this car is in such good condition. The last time I took it for an MOT, the guy pulled it up on the ramp, looked underneath it, and he said, What is it that you actually want me to MOT on this car? <laughs> Look how that picks up in 50 mile hour. No, no lag on that. Touch the accelerator. No turbo lag on that. Kev, who confirms that the power output on the car. It's around 200 horsepower on this one, and it definitely feels it. And obviously, it weighs next to nothing. Well, until you in. until I get in. <laughs> <laughs> are all into the the new cars that have come out nowadays like the like the new Astras and the, the new Focus RS's and such like you know what I mean so although some kids are going to grow up as enthusiasts because of their parents who were born in that era so the market I don't think will decrease completely but I think it will decrease by about 50% at least because as, as people from that era die off so does the love of these motors you know to at least a, a good percentage. I think there's some truth in that. I think that the, the counter argument to that is if you look at something like, um, if you look at an RS2000, yeah. or you look at uh, an RS3100 Capri, they're 40,000 pounds now, 45,000 yes. pounds. Now, there can't be that many of those people that were around when the RS3100s were out, that are still out there buying them. Exactly. You are gonna get less of these because the cars 
get crashed. Yeah. The cars, you know, have problems. You can't locate parts for them. People don't have the ability to maintain them and look after them as well as they were. So they are going to die off eventually, and that's making them rarer and rarer. The question is whether or not, you know, wh which of the Ford models from the hot hatch era are the ones that are going to do well financially? Yes. Obviously, the Series One RS Turbo is already doing incredibly well. You've only got to look at the uh, the Fiesta XR2. The Fiesta XR2 is a lot earlier than the XR2i obviously but yeah. even sort of like a pristine XR2 you're looking in the region of 24,000 quid. I've seen some crazy ones but I've also seen some affordable ones that are still really really nice. Yes yes it all so, depends on odours and mileage etc. Yeah I think the thing is is that there's certainly there's definitely a market for the really pristine ones but I think some dealers are still trying it on with some of their prices on some oh, of those cars. Of course they are. So that's why the prices are so high. Obviously this is starting to go into the 1990s. Um, so I don't think that these are worth quite as much as them because they're not quite as old. No. Somebody who was to keep this for another seven, eight, nine, ten years, whatever, I think then you're gonna be looking ridiculous money for it. Yeah. Especially in this condition. Yeah. Because finding one in this condition is not the easiest thing in the world. <laughs> it's not. Here we see the Ford owner in his natural habitat, under the bonnet of his car, trying to fix something that's gone dramatically wrong. In view of tens of thousands of other local northeast residents. So we've had a few slight technical issues. As you can see behind me, the Fiesta RS Turbo has broken down. <laughs> it's gone full Ford. It's gone full Ford on us. What's going on? Not post that. I'll be devastated. One careful owner. <laughs> <laughs> and then me. And then this man. <laughs> One careful owner and then Kev. Have you got anything to say about the reliability of your Ford? It doesn't have any. <laughs> <laughs> I just love it. The boost gauges, things ticking away. Still got the standard Ford stereo. We still got this beautiful three-spoke RS Turbo steering wheel in this car. Uh, we've got a whole host of other original bits. These seats are in fantastic condition and just being in here, actually there's a stack of visibility, you forget how easy it is to see out of these Fiestas. You've got pretty much perfect all-round visibility from these cars um, and that's really what makes them work so, so well as a driver's car. It feels really light and airy inside here despite the fact it's 30 years old and actually from a driver's viewpoint it's pretty pleasant place to be. And just listen to the noises, everything's really mechanical in this car and I think that's one thing that stands out when you drive it is that the noises create the atmosphere and the ambience of the car and actually the noises are partially what takes you back, they're part of the nostalgia. You remember driving these on full boost, giving the car a little bit of hammer and you remember just how much fun they were. You were a god if you had a modified RS Turbo back in the 1990s. You were literally, you could write your own checks. You could have any woman that you wanted. You could have whatever you wanted. You were like the wolf of Wall Street. This was the king of hot hatches. Between this and its brother, the Escort RS Turbo, you were king of the hill. You were the daddy. And quite rightly so, because it's still so cool! Man, this car is cool. This is an achingly cool car. And as I've driven this for the past couple of days, so many people looking and staring at the car still. I've had people in brand spanking new Jaguars and BMWs, M5s pulling up next to it and pointing and photographing it. Because you just don't see these on the road anymore. You just don't see them, they're not around. Um, it's rare and rarity and scarcity have bumped the prices. One of these now, a clean one, is around £15,000. And actually, I think that's quite cheap because I think that they will go up quite a lot in the next 10 years. Performance Fords always do go up in value. And these are actually a very rare car. There wasn't that many of them about, really, to start with. And consequently, I don't think that many of them have been saved, or certainly not quite as many have been saved as you would get with the Escort RS Turbo. What a machine. The question is, question is, what's it like living with a 30 year old Fiesta Aris Turbo in 2020? It was produced in 1990, this car, and obviously this is a modified car. What's it like living with it today? Do you know something? 
not that easy is the answer. Um, this is a modified car on uh, coilovers with a Cosworth brake upgrade onto it. Obviously the car is modified and I'll go through a list of mods that are on the car shortly. Um, but it rides hard, it's bouncy, um, it feels rattly and tin canny and it's not necessarily the most pleasant thing to drive if you're just cruising around. It kind of rattles you and jars you a little bit and bounces you about quite a bit. Modern cars are much better because they've had 30 years of development over this. None of that, none of that really matters though. Because when you drop it down and give it a little bit of boost like that on a little back row like this, it takes you back 30 years and you've got to concentrate to drive this car. Whoa, 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 yes. Come on, come on. 30 years ago, I'd have been dueling with a Peugeot 205 GEI on this back road and having massive amounts of fun. The pull from that Garrett turbocharger is still on the money. There's a little bit of vibration through the brakes with the Cosworth upgrade, but there's plenty of stopping power there. The steering is mm, numb at best. It doesn't give you a huge amount of feedback. But when it's on the boost, oh, talk steer, get in. When it's on boost like that, it flies, absolutely flies. What a fantastic, fantastic car. The nostalgia, the nostalgia is what takes you back. It's the emotion of the car. And I don't know if you noticed, but I didn't look at the camera whilst I was actually driving there because I didn't. So, everything on this car is classic Ford. The interior is pure Ford. Ford switch gear, it's the same switch gear used about probably across most of the Ford range at the time. It's all 80s and 90s, blue oval. Classic three spoke steering wheel. I really like this steering wheel. The Recaro's absolutely mint. I love these. Actually grip is still really well to this day. They're still a really good seat. Even for my considerable bulk, they're not uncomfortable. They're a lot better than the seats in the Skoda VRS that I've been driving around in this week. And that's 30 year old seat technology, although I'm guessing seats don't really change that much. I'm just coming on to the A19. In this Fiesta RS Turbo. I'm on the slip road. Let's give this a little bit of boost, now we warmed up. It's still quick. It's still a nippy car. There's plenty of torque there. The turbo sounds amazing. I don't know if you're really catching that noise. Just dropping behind this Q7. Sounds awesome, doesn't it? Just driving down the A19 now. And actually, on a road like the A19, it's a really pleasant thing to drive. This is what I would do with this car. I would probably just use it to drive up and down nice A roads and dual carriageways, looking really, really cool. And giving it big straight line boost and just enjoying the sounds of that engine. Thank you for watching that episode and I hope you enjoyed seeing Kev's RS Turbo Fiesta. What an absolutely amazing car. Don't forget to click the subscribe button below and hit like on the video. It helps the channel quite a lot. Make sure that you click the bell icon to get updated with all of our new videos. See you next time.